Um, since we're about five minutes um, out, um, we can't really do anything because we only have three, uh, four commission members. Mm -hmm. Tyler's on, online, so hopefully, hopefully, we'll get more to show up. Um, our our venue has changed a little bit, so uh, we used to be meeting at the uh, mayor's office, but um, uh, I guess there's a couple other people. You know, our commission was uh, was chartered to. To uh, meet this resolution that was done in uh, 2017 to be 100 percent renewable by 2035, so that's kind of our guiding, our guiding uh, uh, mission. And uh, uh, there's there's um, a, a couple ways to to get ready for that. Um, one is that uh, you can save energy by making all your buildings more efficient, right? So. Um, less money spent, uh, you know, less energy used is is a way to uh, to get it. So this energy efficiency is an important piece. Then uh, uh, the the other way is, uh, and in 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 doing so, um, one of the things we want to do are are to really go in depth more. Uh, Colorado has a approach to this through the Colorado Energy Office. Um, using energy performance contracts, and uh, you know, uh, if if we can do that, uh, my hope is is that we could uh, improve the energy efficiency, uh, move towards electrification, so that uh, we we um, take fossil fuels out of um, out of um, we use less fossil fuels. We convert to heat pumps. We can uh, convert things to uh, electricity, and then we also provide our own electricity, or or, uh, or or get the electricity through solar. So that's kind of um, what this commission has been working on for the for the past couple of years. Um, I recently became chair. Um, Steve Naraki was chair bef before me, um, so. So that's kind of our, our calling principle, and um, uh, what um, I'm, I'm kind of trying to burn some time to get uh, Andrew Hayes some opportunity to show up because uh, he got called into the mayor's office. Um, uh, so you know, Black Hills um, approached um, Andrew and said, let, "Let us do let us do some of these en energy audits." And I guess they used Michael's Energy as a as a um, contractor to do this. Uh, this was all free to the city, um, but this is kind of the, the low hanging fruit. This is really not uh, not the energy performance contracts that uh, we kind of envision doing. So, um, and the idea when you do these energy performance contracts is that you save money. You don't go forward with these uh, with these uh, contracts unless it actually saves you money. So it's all about uh, saving money, and. You know, from, from a city organization, if you can save that money, that gives you more money to use in more, you know, more critical things uh, and actually doing doing the city's work. Um, How about those fire stations that they're looking at building? Are they, since we have the fire department on, are they, are they looking at that? Did you hear that, Chris? Did you hear that question? Do you know what's going on with the, the net zero fire stations? The three stations we're designing now are all designed to be net zero, all electric. Are they? Uh, have you got funding for that? Has that, has that been figured out? Because I know in, in the in the city, uh, one of the work sessions they were going after a, a financing approach. They approved. Uh, a COP, a bond program, and I believe it closes. Um, Chief Huber will have to tell me. I can't remember what the closing date is on it. I don't know if we can take credit for that, can we? <laughs> well, you know, I think that idea. Well, yeah, I think we can. I mean, this Energy Commission actually talked about, you know, we knew that uh, the, uh, the fire department was planning these new stations. And we said, well, you know, let's let's do this net zero uh, approach. Now, I don't think these uh, these buildings are true net zero because you still have some natural gas coming in to power a, 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 
a generator for you know for emergency backup. Um, uh, probably because batteries are just too expensive right now to, to do that similar thing. Um, uh, but you know that's that's changing a, a lot. Um, so. I think I, I think the other thing maybe we can do is uh, uh, give a report readout on the policy committee if there's anything you wanted to say, Alan. Yeah, so the policy committee, I guess we met once or maybe twice since the last meeting. Um, we primarily talked about the bylaws. Um, we've kind of been working on making some edits to the proposed bylaws. Um, we talked about um, how, and I'm trying to remember, maybe I reported on this last time, maybe it was two meetings ago, but we, we had a discussion about how the um, Energy Advisory Commission needs to plug into uh, the PUC process. Um, you know, the city intervenes in, in most of the PUC hearings um, regarding local energy. And uh, we haven't really been good about making sure that we're in touch with the city attorney and, and the special counsel that they hire uh, to intervene in those cases. And so we just kind of had the discussion that we need to be sure that we we're engaging in that process because it's an important part of of uh, the energy future for the city. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, I think this um, in, in, in uh, being, being more informed about what's happening with Black Hills Electric and Excel Gas at the PUC is, is something that, uh, that we want to do a better job of. I know that the city hires an intervener to, to do that. Uh, um, and we just need to figure out whether we want to get a report from him mm. on a regular basis or, um, or, or if we, you know, if there's some special issue, we want to comment. One thing that's happening now, uh, based on a, uh, on a, uh, uh, a state Senate bill, uh, asking to look at, uh, how can we lower the utility costs, um, that uh, uh, they're setting up some meetings. And I think I passed along the um, the note that said, hey, you know, if you wanted to attend these meetings, um, I will I will go to a, a group of, of meetings. But what they're asking for our customers to kind of give feedback. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's not it's not a, it's not intervening, but it's it's, it's a, a committee looking at at uh, at how to do this. And I guess this committee will then report to the PUC. So, um, you know, also uh, the PUC has an office called the um, um, uh, uh, Utility Consumer Advisor Council. So this group is supposed to look after the uh, uh, the consumers. Uh, you know, look look uh, intervene at, at PUC things. Um, with the with with the uh, consumer in mind. And uh, you know maybe maybe we could get a meeting with them to see how 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 we could get better informed too. Um, I know a couple people there that run that office that we could we could uh, give that ask. I'm sure they'd be happy to come come to our meeting. Um, so since we have the the police department, what's the status on the electric uh, vehicles for the police department? Do we know? Yes, uh, we have. Hey, there's the chief. Hey, chief. Hey. Holy cow. How are Man. you? Actually, Kenny could probably give you the numbers better than I can, but we have several Mustang mach -E's, and I think we're getting, we've ordered three uh, Ford F-150 Lightnings uh, for patrol, our, our DICE team. The mach -E's are not going into patrol use. They're primarily for investigations and uh supervisory staff because they're just not big enough to put somebody in the back of have you gotten your chargers up and running or or uh, are you still waiting for that yeah we have a one fast charger and two regular chargers right kenny 
That's right. We have the one, the, the DC fast charger, and then the two. Um, I'm not really sure how they're rated, but the two one, the two chargers that take about four hours to charge a car. Okay. So since this is in the works, Chief, uh, what what kind of uh, feedback are you getting from other departments around the state or the country that have a electric vehicles in their fleet. Are they pretty happy, satisfied with those? Uh, oh, sorry, Chief, I think you're muted still. Uh, right now, as far as I know, and Kenny can correct me if you know something different, but I think most departments that have electric vehicles, that they're not in the patrol fleet. They're okay. like uh, administrative or investigative units that are not driving them uh the way the same way a, a, a patrol uh division does so we may be i don't know that i'd go so far out on a limb to say we're the first to do it but we may be we may be in a very small number that are that are moving in that direction great great i, so I would this, say the same i would i would echo what the, what the chief said in my experience it's mostly administrative type of positions um and it's so do that it's it's uh, haven't had a whole lot of feedback yet, as far as I know. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I guess one of the questions I would have on the EV fleet while we're talking about that topic is: is do the battery charges work work long enough for you? I mean, I you know I know that um, I, I I had talked with one of the. Uh, um, one of the captains or the chief a while back when they had the EV event at PCC. And uh, at that time, you know, he was concerned about getting the, the cars charged. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, the EV mileage on these things is supposed to be uh, 300 miles or something like that. And I understand that you only drive these about 100 miles. Of course, they're always on. You're always heating them and cooling them. So that uses energy. Does that charge last long enough? Is that... Uh, is that going to be a problem for you? Well, I think that's the that's what we don't know yet. Um, you know, with them being used administratively, they're not running for a 10, 15 hour shift. Right. With the lights on, with the uh, you know, the heaters on, the air conditioners on, depending on the temperature outside. Uh in this, in this where we are in southern Colorado, uh, probably. 10 months out of 12, either your air conditioner is going to be on all day long or your heater is going to be on all day long. Um, so it'll be interesting, especially with the cold that we get here, although it's it's warmer than it would be in Denver. How much is that going to affect battery charge? How much is somebody sitting at an accident scene like we had uh, with the railroad uh, uh, deal uh, uh, derailment uh, for a 10 hour shift? With the lights on going to affect charge um these are questions that that we don't know the answers to just yet um, yeah. so i mean i think an average day it'll probably be fine um but in, in our line of work an average day is only an average day till it's not right, so, you, right. you really you got to be prepared for the emergencies yeah i understand right right yeah. so we'll, we'll see my biggest concern honestly right now is if uh some kind of natural disaster uh, happens here and we lose electric power um how we're going to charge our cars and it you know i mean it's not likely to happen but right now we don't have a way of, if we were at an all electric fleet and we had a natural disaster and had no power for four days which is not unheard of i mean i think texas had an issue a year ago where certain parts of texas didn't have power for a week or two right. um, what are we going to do so i mean you know, there are some things I think I think we still need to uh, to be looking into as far as to increase that capacity, whether that's somehow hooking into our, our generator here at the police department, which is a diesel generator, but it can provide power. Uh, uh, but there's some technical issues with us hooking into that generator at this point right now that makes it not workable, so not a workable solution. I think, you know, uh, so I, I know we're getting we off could the topic, go, this, oh, Sorry, Ken. Go ahead, Tyler. Oh, I was just saying, uh, shameless plug, but, you know, uh, a simple solar system can charge directly to those chargers. Like, I mean, we just bought, I, I own Steel City Solar, 
and we just bought our first electric uh, service vehicle. And, and we're planning on building a dedicated array to charge those vehicles so they won't even use the grid. Right. Yeah. I'm going to second that. I was seeing some new issues on solar. Solar charge, or charges at DC, which is better than both the ACs. And um, there's a lot of new things. Uh, parking lots are having overhead um, shelters, but they're solar panels. Some of them actually include batteries too. When I say batteries, I don't mean the, you know, your your um, automotive battery. I'm talking about a battery like in a Tesla, and um, you know that may be a part of the solution um, to having those. But I can't remember: is your fleet indoors or outdoors? Our fleet is. I'm sorry. Your is your fleet of police vehicles indoors or outdoors? We're we're in we're outdoors. Outdoors, so. Yeah, to have a cover and over them with solar. Again, this is all money, but uh, luckily at this time of our lives, there's lots of money going towards alternative energy. And, um, you know, and then of course they could, um, you know, I worked for Excel and Black Hills, same thing. You may be out in your area over here, but over at the uh, convention center parking lot, uh, how many how many chargers we have there? Like they're, they're 10, 20? Oh, you're talking about the, the Tesla uh, superchargers. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, they'll work on police. How many is over there? Do you know, Ken? About eight. And those are those are level three DC chargers. Yeah. So you see, um, chances are the whole city is not going to be out. But that would be a good emergency plan is to have uh, some throughout the uh, uh, area, which we plan on anyway as a, as a city, having more of those. Um, so that may answer the question I along with what... Uh, Tyler was stating they're they're really remarkable. Yeah. I mean, there was um, in our last meeting we had um, um, we had these folks from a company called New Day Hydrogen. Okay, and and uh, what um, what they do is they have this uh, uh, container that you could you could you could bring down. I don't know what the cost is. This company's new, so it's a, it's, a, it's in a startup mode, um, but. What they do is they generate hydrogen, and then use that as a source of energy to 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 drive, you know, whatever you need to uh, through a fuel cell, to um, to then get get electricity. So, you know, that might be an idea. Yeah. Again, this kind of goes to this energy performance contracts because if we can get a consultant in that knows how these things work, knows 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 um, the cost of it. Yeah, uh, you know, we we have a lot of solution, you know, potential solutions where we could be supplying our own energy, and if the city owned that energy, uh, you, you know, you have to pay the upfront costs of it, but uh, you know, the the payback. I'm a I'm a big advocate of of renewable energy, so I have rooftop solar on my house. The payback of a home in Pueblo is about six and a half years. Okay, that's when um, when you start making making or the energy starts to become free okay now of course if you have a loan you have to service that loan um but um uh you know once you get past that that break point then your energy is is um really low cost um so one of one of one of my goals is to see how we how we can do that for the city Mm -hmm. if, it, if it makes if it makes economic sense and if we have the resources to do it and that could be a solution for the for the police department mm -hmm. um now when you're talking about hydrogen you mean hydrogen through a, a, a through like all of us. are you talking about a self um contained it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a I'm hydrogen you know these guys came and said you know what they basically do is they do through electrolysis so they use photo they, they use solar cells they generate hydrogen and then you use that hydrogen when you need it. So it's a way of storing energy. It's, it's like a battery, right? I just wanted to make sure we were talking, because Excel wants to put hydrogen in there mixed in too. I just want to make sure you were talking. A, a mix of hydrogen into the gas lines is a terrible idea. I, I think so too. But I also think that these hydro, hydrogen generators are, I think we we should stick with the solar and the, and the uh, wind cell. generators and the batteries. Right cells um, because of the, uh, you know, that technology and things. Um, I'm not sure where it's at now, but you, I didn't get, I, unfortunately I didn't hear the meeting yesterday, so.
But the um, the um, you probably want to go back and I'll, I'll go on with you. You know. Okay. But thank you. So I, I I believe we have a quorum. I need to take care of a, a piece of business. Do we know where Andrew is? Uh, what if it, what if Andrew just doesn't show up? I mean, we can go ahead. I can go ahead and speak on the reports. So um, we What's the subject matter here? Brand, the um, audits, energy audits. Okay. As I noticed, uh, there's they, 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 Black Hills audited three buildings, so there's there's the audits there. I, um, yeah, I just uh, want to make sure I saw that on the agenda, but we're talking okay, about right. I guess it's we, it's generating. Yeah. He'll be just okay. a few more minutes. Sorry, he was just he was on an emergency yes. call at okay. the mayor's office, but he says he's on his way yeah. back. Okay. Yeah, so we we've got one piece of business. We have we now have uh, six six members from the um the uh, commission. So uh, when uh, one when one it shows up one piece of business for the commission. Um Motion to is, is, a, is a motion to approve the uh the consent agenda, which is which is the with the agenda we're we're going down. We're not quite going through it in the in yeah. Order. I was asking is do we need to wait for no that? okay we got enough right here and yeah. you can yeah yes. so I, I so I'd like to get a motion to approve this. I'll make that motion to approve those. Do we have a second? Second. Everybody uh that approves say yes. 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 Anybody that, that disapproves say no. No. I'm <laughs> Gee, sorry. Yeah, no. I, I just uh, pick a side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yes, I take back my no. Okay, so the consent agenda is approved. Uh, the the you know the other piece of business, and we can hold this off, is that um, uh, there was a proposed um, uh, set of bylaws. Um, uh, Alan has has gone through these uh, and improved them. Thank you, Alan. By the way, thank you for that work. Hopefully, it's an improvement. It's an improvement. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we have the latest version here. Yes, that is um, the latest version. Okay. Um, so we can do this. Well, I'm just saying, just uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll wait for Andrews to show up. We'll go into the energy performance, um, the energy audits, mm -hmm. and, and then we'll we'll come back to the spy law. Okay. Um, did you tell them that he's just about getting off the phone? Yeah. So I don't know if you heard heard the uh, um, administrator that came in, but Andrews is... is uh, on his way here from the mayor's office. So um, we can go ahead and just start looking at him um, just to be mindful of yeah, everyone's time. Especially um, the chief and we have the fire department. Chief, deputy chiefs here. So again, thank you all for joining, uh, commissioners as well. Uh, yeah. Thank you for um, changing locations today. So we'll go ahead and go into the audits now. Um, just going to start. Uh, let me just pull those up as soon as I share the screen here. Okay. okay, we have these audits completed by Michael's Energy as well as Black Hills. So the first, we'll, we'll go ahead and look at the uh, Pueblo Municipal Justice Center right next door to us. Okay, so um, moving through contacts. So the purpose of this is to identify savings of plus or minus 30%. Um, so this audit has recommended some solutions for enhanced energy savings. Contents here. So the purpose of this audit was to investigate the equipment and operation within the building to identify opportunities for financial operational energy savings. So these are recommendations. Um, I think just the first part of this is um, these two implementations are um, not costing anything up front. Um, in uh, the report, it will show it's part of the <clears throat> things that could be updated. So what's a CAW okay. reset? So um, that is the um, chilled water reset. Okay. So we'll, we'll go to that section in just a bit. In the current state of the facility, we see that um, it's about in line with other facilities similar 
Um, we can see that right now, there's about two and a half million kilowatt hours proposed updates can bring that number down. Um, but there's also tr trade offs with that as well. Okay, so looking at the fuel usage here, we could see that the kilowatt hours, um, it's pretty um, within within the range throughout the year. So AC, uh, electrical, everything like that. Looking at the demand again, kilowatt hours. So we have natural gas usage as well. So we could see the lower points during the summer months, higher during the winter months. Uh, okay, so looking at the equipment now, we can see that um, a spread electrical use between fans, lighting, air conditioning, office equipment, and heat pumps. And then looking at the heating and ventilation. <laughs> so we have easier for you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. So it's good. I think we're going over the uh, uh, the municipal buildings. Good, good, good. You got all three? Yes, we have the printed out reports as well as up here as well. So Looking at the uh, energy conservation opportunities now, um, like summary said, these are the different implementations. So going into each of them. The police chief is on now. Um, yeah. So let's go back to that, that, that table. Okay. Uh, energy conservation opportunities. Okay. So I, I just want to go to the to the bottom line. Um, so it's saying that the cost would would be around one hundred one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to to make to make the improvements, the recommendations, and you would see an annual savings of of, of seventy uh, seventy seven thousand dollars. Is that is that correct? A one and a half year payback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. So so it pays back pretty fast. Okay. Very. So there, there are things that they identified that um, across, and, and it's similar for all three facilities. They, they identified, I think, some low hanging fruit options here. Right? Um, in, in PMJC in particular, it, there's probably a deeper level we could go to that they, they identified some um, opportunities within the HVAC system in there that are that we that I'm not surprised by, um, just in terms of the way they're operated, the way they probably need to be redone and recommissioned. Um, that will just result in energy savings right from the get. Um, the system that's in there right now, for instance, is uh, 15 years old. I think the buildings are about 15 years old, but they've been run almost full time, both heating and cooling. So chillers and boilers the whole time. So they're, they've run like they're 30. And um, there's it's 20, in other words, it's 24 hours a day, seven and, days a week type thing. And I mean, there's there's some um, legitimate reason for having both going at the same time. However, the way that they're set and the um, variable, uh, variable speed motor that are in there, uh, those are, I'm sorry, the BFDs that are in there are um, not set at some optimal running configuration. And the controls settings are not set. They are set to make it so that the building stays comfortable, but they're certainly not set with energy conservation in mind. Mm -hmm. They're set for function at the moment. Yeah, a lot of them run both like in the summer is a good e example. All the BTUs, everyone's a BTU, a person in that building uh, comes in and so they need air conditioning. Those same people come in the winter and the air conditioner uh, kicks on because it thinks that all these BTUs and it shuts and the heat's running at the same time mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. It's so specifically with that one there's there we've we've known that there have been some configuration issues i guess with the hvac system that was installed it's not designed for this altitude number one um so the boilers are always not going to operate efficiently and so we're looking at this as kind of confirmatory of that and uh, there are some very quick payback kinds of projects that are in there you see some of these others right the the 5.8 year reconfigured data center layout mm -hmm. um there there are things there that might 
be good ideas, but maybe we want to set some kind of a policy that we want to pick projects that have a five year or less payback. Were you talking about the heat pump, oh, the heat pump technology, possibly, if you need units? Potentially. The, I mean, the building's already equipped with, um, um, uh, sorry, uh, water heat, the air heats in, in um, or VAVs in each of the um, spaces, right? So they've got um, refrigerant piped through the building. Um, but there's a separate boiler and a separate chiller, not a heat pump kind of technology that's yeah. necessarily installed up there. I think if we did it, it would be, a, if we went that way, it's complete redo of the mechanical systems. Well, we might be able to do better by just finding a boiler and chiller system or set of systems that work, uh, making sure that those VFDs are working on the air handlers where they're running 100% of the time at 100% power. So there's, there's controls issues, and I think there's some equipment configuration that we need to address on that one. And this just confirm some of our fears. I just want to remind you that these, there, for municipal buildings, there's a lot of rebates available. If you go to uh, the heat pump technology yeah. and, and solar possibly, yeah. you know, with it, it may be just as cheap. And then one fast question, your $100,000 for lighting, um, did they talk to you? Maybe some of it can be done on your normal maintenance. Like, like if these were um, fluorescents sure. and you want to change them out LD, LD, yeah. LEDs, um, there's LEDs that'll fit even with the ballast right on them. So you'd have to do is change it. They're in. Yeah. Well, what I'm getting at. So I mean, these kinds of things we do when we do. Sure. That. Sorry. So that hundred thousand yeah. is what I'm guessing. Maybe a lot lower. They didn't talk about how we get it done okay. at all. This was strictly a an estimate of cost based on the number of fixtures and presuming that there's going to be some third party contractor sure. coming to do it. And I'm, yes. I'm, I'm glad you you're answering because you already are doing these. So I appreciate yeah. it. So I think, you know, one of the things that um, that we, you know, the, uh, the commission wants to, to push, okay? Now, this is over a long period of time. It doesn't need to happen, you know. Uh, we really need to kind of make these things happen by 2040, okay? 35. Yeah. Well, 2035. Yeah. If, if we could do it faster, <laughs> that's fine. Absolutely. Okay? But we want to we want to be electrify everything, yeah. okay? Yeah. So heat pumps become... Critical, right? If you're if you're using if you're using natural gas in these systems to you know to to generate the power, yeah. or I mean the, the police station says they you know they have a diesel backup generator, right? Those things probably need to sure. you know need to be replaced, right? Uh, so there's and we can we can look at estimates for that. Okay. What we're doing here isn't like this. This wasn't done. Right? These guys don't come in and look at how do we eliminate fossil fuels, right? Right. That's a different goal, right? And that's not necessarily going to have the payback that we're talking. About. It's going to have different kinds of paybacks to achieving our longer-term energy strategy. That's fine. This wasn't kind of that framework, but there are opportunities here too that will reduce energy footprint, reduce energy consumption, whatever the source. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if we're talking about going down, you know, our twenty thirty-five goal, uh, if we want to go all electric, so that we can. Generate our own. Yeah, I think one of one of one of our concerns. Okay, now I mean this is all, this is good stuff. Yep. I mean, you know, yeah, any any time you can save money, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I I, uh, I mentioned early on, right? Energy efficiency is important too, right? So uh, the, the the cheapest energy saved is energy you don't even use, right? Um, so if we could do some of those things, uh, the, the concern is is that this is the low hanging fruit. Right, yep. and in a bigger, a bigger electrification, uh, uh, energy performance contract, you kind of use this th this savings mm -hmm. to to help pay for some of the more expensive things. Sure. So, um, uh, and and and, and uh, I think you know the other piece of this too is that we could be generating some of our own energy as a, as a city, right? Yes. If we did some behind the meter stuff, in other words. Put a canopy of solar panels on on this parking garage, you know, next door, yep. for example, right? Um, and maybe that could maybe that could that could power all the police cars that were converting to EVs, right? For example. Um, um, anyway, okay. Can I ask, yes. please? Yeah, I just since I think we still have cheap Noler, and we have a, a fire chief, we have mm. captain. I guess. What I what we're talking about 
How is that relevant to them and their positions? What can they do that, because public works takes care of all the buildings. And uh, so I guess it's, they're listening to us here. So what, what role do they play in all this for this group here in public works? One of the advantages police have is that we've got one giant facility to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, fire department's obviously a little bit spread out, but we've got three new facilities that we're obviously targeting the right thing up front. Mm -hmm. um, and as older as the older facilities are either decommissioned or converted to some other use, there will be opportunities to upgrade them for whatever else we're going to do. Um, I, I don't, I, whenever we put together capital improvement projects, um, you know, Chief Miller and Chief Huber both have been extremely supportive of whatever way we need to go. Primarily the focus has been so far on making sure their operational needs are met, right. but having their support backwards also we for the, that. For the uh, energy cars and stuff. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, working on police have, five, is it five new chargers, Captain Ryder? I think you guys have. So they're, they've are they got several mach -E's that are already out on the road running around if you haven't seen them yet. Um, yeah, actually, uh, Andrew, we have a, we had, we started off with two mach -E's and then we just ordered 12 more. So yeah. we'll have a total of 14 here probably within the next uh, month or month and a half on the street. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And five chargers to kind of support you guys and keeping them uh, on the road, correct? That's Please. correct. Yeah. Um, and, and Andrew, I, I don't want to get off um, on another discussion, but that's our, my, at least in my opinion, that's our biggest challenge right now is the chargers. Okay. Um, this is right now super convenient to use a DC fast charger. But from what I understand, that's not necessarily what's best for the vehicle. So um, ideally, we'd be using the, the other charger more, the other chargers more. Um, but then, of course, now we're looking at, you know, four or five, six hours to charge a car rather than sure. 30 to 40 minutes. Sure. Yeah, if they're parked yeah. for a long period of time, that level two should be able to top you off over overnight kind of thing. But if you need a if you need a quick boost to go to Denver or do something like that, yeah, that DC fast charger would be the one. Right. Gotcha. So of course, Chief Noller put a kibosh on the whole thing because he said, well, what happens if we're like Texas where the power was out for like a week or two? And so it's like, how do they back up, make sure that they have the have we, that their fleet. I walked in late, but George has some information. Okay. <laughs> so he, did, he, did, he asked to address that. So we have a couple of for worst case scenario. Yeah. Right. So we have a couple off grid solutions that we were looking at. There's this one product that is a uh, off grid solar car canopy charger in a sense. So we've been in discussion with the uh, sales and uh, procurement. So we're looking to finalize just a couple more details and then get a couple quotes for those products for um, Parks and Rec as well as um, public charging, but maybe worth to consider for police as well. It's a uh, at least a starting point for kind of testing the product before we invest in lots of them. Um, but they're vary between 65 at the base, I think, and you can get different options that, with that additional battery capacity or other uh, options that take them up to 90-ish probably um, per unit, but they have two level right. three chargers installed on them. So you can uh, basically charge a battery bank in that unit and then you know, you're off grid, every drop, or every drop, every bit of energy you're generating is, is free. Um, there are options to connect them to the grid if power, you know, if it was a week of snow and whatnot, if you really wanted to, but um, I think for the, the the biggest advantage is that you're not having to install a bunch of underground infrastructure to necessarily uh, get them fielded so right, you can be done quickly. Well, and when when the um, you know the worst happens, uh, if there was a, a wide scale power outage or long term power outage, um, we're still able to generate some energy and keep um, you know at least the most important vehicles on the road um, yeah. during that time. And that's so, why it's a priority to probably make. The police station, one of the first ones we put solar on it with some backup batteries sure. if we're going to do that anywhere. Because, um, but you know, with your distribution, if you put them on, they're not, they're only a block away if you put them on, uh, like Ken suggested on the parking garage. Um, the backup batteries are getting, or the batteries are getting so good because uh, obviously the sun doesn't shine in the evening, mm -hmm. but. Uh, um, but I like those canopy things. You can have those canopy things. They're they're semi-portable too. So if you do yeah. put them down, they don't they don't require a building permit. 
there are just sure. no pertinence in the parking lot. Uh, they don't eat up your parking spaces. Mm -hmm. And essentially, if you know Parks and Rec decides that electric vehicle that they've got out there isn't the right thing, and we need to move it somewhere else, we can pick those canopies up also and take the charging solution with us when we move them to wherever. Yeah, and they and they some of them come with battery. Also, you know, for an extra charge, you besides the canopy, we fill them. They all have the battery, but they have different capacities. You can buy larger battery banks on them. Sure. But you're talking about the canopies, right? Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Well, you know, That's I mean, one option. you could, I mean, if you opt this out from an energy standpoint, right, then maybe, uh, you know, we, we've got um, Tyler Sherratt, who, you know, who, who does the installation stuff. I don't know if you're doing any utility scale stuff, but, you know, you can buy these. Utility scale batteries, they're probably a you know a megawatt battery. It's in a container. Yeah. And you can just park that container where you know right next to the police station. But you know, you need that other piece. How do you charge it? Right. So you'd, you'd want the solar to, to keep it charged. And I don't know if you know if 100 megawatts is the right number, but uh that's that's a lot of power. Um, you know, that might last you through, you know, through um uh, through several days of having no power. And I think you, you need to worry about it. And there's big rebates on it, and it's getting cheaper every year. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you've got the Inflation Reduction Act that will give you a 30% uh, discount in that. So, Chief, are you feeling better? Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's crying. Okay. Right on. Rain. <laughs> so, I, it's good to know Public Works is looking out for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in the end, at the the coordination piece for these energy improvements, they're going to sell themselves in terms of cost, or these kinds of projects, right? They're going to sell themselves in terms of payback, right? Um, but the long term solution to me, that 2035 goal is a slightly adapted, a different path from this. But sometimes they're complementary. So um, that wasn't the focus of this. When it comes time to bring projects to the mayor or council for approval, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about. Uh, have, they, have, what, these, what have, these, have these reports been shared with uh, uh, the, the folks that are online? Or, or yes, I've shared with them. Um, so for this report, I just like to talk about these first two that don't cost anything. Perhaps we can just investigate. Um, just going down to these. Can, can I ask first a one? question on the before we move mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. that table? So it's showing that installing LED lighting results in a negative savings of 9,690 therms of gas. So I'm, is, is this like a draft report or is, has this actually been reviewed or? They don't put out as much heat, the LEDs. Oh, that's why, that is true. See, that's a big it, cost savings. You know, even going from fluorescence to LEDs, it, they, they put out a lot less heat. So that, that means uh, you're gonna have to Heat more you're building with the ATC, but you'll have less cooling, which is a heavier cost yeah. because they. So Andrew, didn't they do that already for the city? Most of the buildings. So it depends on which building you're I in. I know the building I'm in. Correct. It was all done. So I mean, as we're doing maintenance, we're buying non-fluorescent. Okay. So these are all LED as they get replaced. Or there's probably a few fluorescent tubes left, mm -hmm. but they're all actually LED tubes in there. Just not in the picture. Okay. Uh, it results in some savings. They could be further retrofitted with even a more efficient one, losing the ballast and other things. But uh, when when the building gets redone, that's kind of the time for those. Um, where we are obviously installing the fire stations, those are all LED lights. Those are uh, you know our new street lights are all LED. All those different kinds of um, new installations are going to. Um, be up to current standards. So, okay. and, the, when, and, and the newer LEDs are better now too because you can control the temperature and and, uh, and, and you know the and, color and, and the brightness too in some ways where they used to be. One that for all this, but I, I think there's something wrong with that figure because for for one, everywhere else in this table, savings are a positive number that's put in parentheses and then totaled as though it's a negative number. You want so it's, that, you it's want actually that. showing that your gas use right. is increasing. It, it will, because, it could. because these lights here, if these were all fluorescent lights, it'd be a lot warmer you can do in the winter. Right. If it's 30 to 10 degrees out, it'd be a lot warmer. Yes. You take all those BTUs out of here, and you're going to have to uh, have to make it up with gas. Okay. So the so light produces that much heat. Yeah, the old incandescence okay. and the okay. LED. I mean, the fluorescence too. All right. Oh, 
run that to ground. But you know, they, they, they all didn't the street lights are LEDs. That that's, a, that's, that, okay. In the city, all the street lights. They get them all done for gas yeah. usage. That's been I was just surprised at how big it seemed like it was. I couldn't tell. You know, 9,000. It's like 2010 to 2013. Yeah, when we did them. Yeah. yeah, I guess Black we're a big building. building. Right. I'm uh, trying to think of it as a percentage of uh, increase too. It's really I mean, interesting. I yeah, I've had a, like a beauty shop that uh, was telling me about it. You know, they had all bright lights and uh, fluorescent and and incandescents, and boy, they put in those, and man, they were cold. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So now is about twenty. Good question, though. Yeah, that's great. Twenty, uh, twenty between twenty and twenty-five thousand thermals. So nine thousand therms additional by. <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah, of like, we'll look at that. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, a good it, it may be right. It just surprised well, me. It's a, it's a good sanity check. Yeah. And I mean, these are estimates based on factors, based on yeah. presumptions. So I mean, yeah. Hopefully, your heating will be more efficient, so that actually won't go up. So how reliable is this report? I mean, is it is it is a quick rock walk through, or I mean. <laughs> I mean, the numbers here, I mean, is... so, I mean, that's... these are estimates from the, from uh, Michael's Energy, who, okay. who was Black Hills contract, right? Okay. I, I mean, we've talked, okay. we've yeah. talked, we've talked about, um, um, sorry, the uh, contract, <laughs> Energy before. thank you, the EPCs, uh, obviously we're, we're going to pay for those and they might be more detailed. Um, this isn't necessarily, you know, investment grade audit kind of material, okay. but it is certainly a place to start to go look for opportunities. A snapshot. Yeah. yeah. Quick and dirty. And, <laughs> and for $115,000, if we can result in, in get a year and a half payback on that, sure. that's certainly some no brainer we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to validate the assumptions like you're talking about, right. just make sure that they're right. Okay. Some of the other things that we had issues with on like the energy performance contracts pieces where we're making improvements that are reliant on human behavior are much harder to maintain sure. than just equipment settings or commissionings or replacement of, of uh, old equipment. Those are things that, um, you know, I can't come in and crank the thermostat down or up. Uh, and, and override the the control settings that we just spent time trying to fix and, mm -hmm. and hopefully generate savings. Those are things that will ultimately in the long run. Well, in modern facilities, typically they don't allow you to do that. Those kind of things. They have those things mm -hmm. locked out, right? What are those? What's that? Well, like a thermostat, right? You, uh, you know, facilities have to come in and sometimes yeah, that's online. That's a constant fight. <laughs> well, we have people that live in these facilities. Sometimes uh, there's nobody on this call that. I'm going to point out, but uh, <laughs> the, the, well, I mean, yeah, you got you got to figure like some people want to bring in a refrigerator and things like that, or like a heater or a uh, yeah, yes, absolutely. Did, did they um, talk about over lighting to uh, the new LEDs put out more bright. light? And I don't know how many is there four in each one of these or two, 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 two. there's two, okay, but they in this one, but you're right, yeah, so to go in and see because ones. what they could do is maybe you know, just. Like maybe eliminate that one and this one may be enough. Um, and you still got plenty of lighting because that's so important. Well, you can imagine what yeah. that does if you got uh, you know a thousand lights and you get rid of twenty five percent of them. Yeah. And um, again, it's it's an easy thing to do because those are disconnects. They're not a professional uh, electrician to right. do. And it and it really, I mean, it's it's not good to overlight. Let's just talk about these first three on this part and then move to the pot. <laughs> uh, we're trying to while go ahead, Joey. We still have those folks uh, still on. So these first two, I believe, don't even cost anything. One um, is just a temperature setting. Um, so enable the chill water reset. Um, it appears that this has been manually set to a temperature of 45 degrees. Um, so perhaps someone from facilities can just go in there and Sure. Um, re reset it um, to an auto facility. Um, uh, and then it looks like there are some uh, energy recovery wheels that have come dirty on the rooftop. So it looks like uh, <laughs> those need to be cleaned to minimize the fan energy loss. So again, not costing anything just looking at the systems cleaning cleaning 
So um, definitely. I, I would say on, on things like that too, mm -hmm. you probably need to get a, a maintenance cycle to where you, ch you check those you know, with some regular frequency, right? And with, with PMJC in particular, they are never not up there. There's not a week that goes by that they're not in those chillers or in those heaters or repairing a glycol leak or is it because they're old or what? Uh, or we're probably at a point where we need to look at a replacement for that system. Hmm. Um, like I said, they've been they're, they're not properly designed for the place that they're in, um, the boilers in particular. Um, but they've also been run for 15 years over time, and so they are they've basically exceed, exceeded their service life. Um, so we're, um, we're probably, um, I want to say we we're just over a million bucks probably for the, for the replacement of the boilers and chillers. And if we went to the air handlers, um, it might be more than that. So that might help us if we were going to particularly look at another strategy like heat pumps or something else to, to, uh, achieve the bigger strategy of producing our, um, uh, Energy yeah, so, so I think those things are going to probably require the uh, energy performance contracts, right? Is that is that what you're thinking is? Or you? I don't think so. I mean, if so, well, if, if, for for example, if we talk if about it, if you wanted to to look at the whole system of how you heat and cool a building, right? Yeah, um, maybe 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 it needs to, maybe insulation is part of this too, right? Uh, to insulate better, but. Um, um, and it's and it's hard to retrofit too is the other problem. Uh, you know, uh, you know, maybe you go to a, a ground loop heat pump, right? For example, a system, or or uh, right. something that might have some big upfront costs, but but uh, over the life of that building would surely pay for itself, right? Yeah. And there are, um, I guess. <laughs> There are opportunities in front of us here that um, we can take advantage of. I think the EPC is the is the financial tool that helps us if we didn't want to put upfront capital down to take care of. Right, we're going to we're going to fund those improvements through the savings we generate. That's that's what EPC is all about. Okay, if we can, I mean, I don't need an EPC to go you know, fix these things, right? Or one hundred fifty. These are small, right? But even yeah, if they found right. a big one, we can still fund it and do it. We just have to put that project in with the rest of the capital improvements. You know, the EPC piece is just an advantageous piece where we are financing those improvements with our savings. The the other part of this is that uh, you know there's been a lot of grant money to can pay for pay right. for some of these upfront costs, right? To do the to do the EPCs and things like that. But those that money is running out, right? So yeah. um, if we if we keep on delaying those things, you may have to pay for it. Um, I think George just just found a grant just recently. Right. That's some electrification project, right? It, it was a, I don't know how much money it was for, but there might be a project in in these reports that you could you could get sure. a, a grant to fund it. Right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Either that or did they, they talk about uh, doing a bond uh, to help fund this? Because like um, Ken said, you, you know, this money could be gone. A city can um, easily sell uh, sell bonds, you know, to cover. You're local. talking about for the EPC itself. No. Um, well, first of all, you, you, uh, you're talking about you know um, a bond. You know, the city could could advertise bonds for us citizens to throw money in to get money back to pay for your infrastructure. Correct. The only thing that I'm aware of we're bonding right now is the three fire stations. So, okay. What I'm saying about the EPC though is we pay or guarantee that we will pay for a study. That study gives us results of energy projects that we can choose to accept or not. We ask. Uh, if we execute those projects or execute enough of those projects and they generate enough savings to pay for the study, the study is free. But there's no pot you. of money that that's coming from. Yeah. It's going to just somebody, I mean, you're right. Essentially, somebody's going to finance those improvements, um, the, the, the Honeywell, the Johnson Controls, the whoever it is that comes and does that EPC study with us. And ultimately, they will reap the benefit of all of the overhead, all of the profit, all the other pieces that we can sometimes do for cheaper too. So I want to be thoughtful about it. you got to be you got to be yeah. you got to be creative. I mean, yes. I mean, and I think you were in, in funding these fire stations, right? Um, I think if you go for a bond, you have to go for a boat for that bond too. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. Not sort of. But, yeah, the true bond, they, yes. If it's a certificate of participation, yeah. which is just an annual, okay. thing, then yeah. you can 
It seems like it's money that's holding all a lot of this back, and sure. so sometimes that's a way to do it. Especially get see, it's a different uh, building fire station going to cost you more, but changing all your your infrastructure so it's more efficient will save you. So um, it, it's probably a more. I mean, it could work real favorable. Yeah. Retrofitting is more expensive. If you have the opportunity to build it right, yes, like we're doing with these fire stations. You, you got to do it. I think I, you know, I, I, I would thank the city and the fire department and everybody involved in in going forward with that. You're doing it the right way. So that's um, those yeah. those projects are going to be amazing when they get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. go in the right direction. Sorry. So this third point, um, this is the uh, highest cost savings, I believe, for that implementation repairing the RTU static pressure control uh, i think this is what andrew was touching on at the beginning how they're both or they're set um the fans operating at 100 percent which is continuous um but that is an implementation cost um to look at so i think just uh moving through these these couple other um implementations um just going through all of them we can just continue to um city hall as well as the fire station while we still have these other folks on um, so you know interlock primary hot water pumps with boilers um, would it be beneficial like to share with someone else from facilities who would have more um control over this where we can work work on a project um were they were, uh, so are they, are they uh, I, you know i read these things but it was a week a week ago so i've for, I forgotten a lot so some of these pumps do they need to be replaced i mean does it make sense to replace them for example in pmjc we are always yeah. replacing pumps yeah i mean I'm, when i so PMJC I wanted to do because I knew it was going to confirm or or surprise me, one or the other. But like I said, our maintenance guys are never not in there working on that. We have two HVAC techs, and they spend the bulk of their time in the PMJC facility. Um, so we are looking probably at something that is going to be a wholesale replacement of the HVAC systems in there. That, that Some of these small things like installing an interlock, yes, we can do that. But there are so many other control and configuration settings in there folks have overridden to make it work to keep keep them in a comfortable temperature range okay. that it's just not operating efficiently and can't um, we've had the manufacturer of the equipment in we've had uh, manufacturers of the control systems in and nobody can seem to untangle the web of um, okay. what's required to make this system work but there have certainly been plenty of um there's been plenty of evidence pointed out where the system isn't right for the building. And so it may just be time given it's at the end of its life um, and that we can probably probably pay for itself with some savings or with the energy savings we're going to get by uh, getting something more efficient in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking too while you're mentioning all this, you got a yeah. tough job, right? I this mean, one's, well... <laughs> Yeah. This is this is um this is one facility, right? Yeah. It's it's the monster, I would say. Of mm -hmm. if if I was looking at our energy hogs, this is the the one that gives me the most pause. Um most of the other buildings, at least we've got we've at least had a look in and we either know and have some ways forward for. This one it's gonna take some uh large scale HVAC renovations in order to make this better. Mm -hmm. At least for the long term. I mean, we can I can go do some of these things, but it's gonna throw the temperatures into whack. Somebody's gonna go in and either reset or uh, it's gonna be too cold or and we're just gonna end up rigging it back to making it comfortable, whatever the energy cost is. And that's not right either. Sorry. So, uh, so I take it that this has helped? This audit has helped you? It was, it, yes. So we got absolutely, um, I'll say we got more than what we paid for. So these were free, right? Um, but they were an opportunity that popped up right as um, Black Hills was starting uh, a consortium with all the all of county and city. So they did several for city, they did several for government, for uh, county, and some for the library district as well. Are they, are they willing to do more? 
I can ask. I don't know how many they would go to, but I, okay. it's possible. I, I think it's a new standard now. Yeah. You know, they were given commercial uh, and energy audits, and then they stopped, and then they started again. So, and it's not something for the city or any. But yeah, I mean, your home can be, your business could be. Yeah. They'll do all the. Ones. This year, their strategic energy management program was kind of focused on governments. Um, I don't know if they, you know, switch between commercial or other program areas or not. But this was the focus of their program this year. I'm okay. I'm, I'm no expert on this, but. You know, there's some line conditioning devices that make your motors run more efficiently. That, uh, you, you know, you, they actually save you energy, in other words. And I put one of these things on my house. It was It's a $400 box. Looks like a surge protector, but it does more. Okay, it takes out, it takes out the bad harmonics. So my my uh, motors, like, the you know, the... The fan motor on my on my heater or air conditioner, uh, the, the oven, mm -hmm. or, you know, any any electronic device runs more efficiently. And for a, for a house, they claim that you can get like a thirteen percent savings. And I'm see, seeing that savings. Okay, well, it so, depends on your on your motors and your your lighting. Uh, the power factor killers are uh, um, are fluorescent lights and motors, but most of the new motors are are soft starts instead of hard start. So it depends on the age of your home. And that figure they're giving you is probably, but I don't know what the cost, uh, if they're, um, is, if their cost, uh, what the payback is. But anyway, I think it's a good thing to, uh, you know, talk about. We'll look into it. You and I, I'll go look into it. Yeah. I, I, you know, so, so somebody that's familiar with, with that technology might, uh, yeah. you know, because they make these power conditioners for all kinds of, of, of uh, you know, mine was like a little cheapy box, but you, you know, we've looked into a number, I guess, um, power savings aspects, but for preserving equipment, right? Because there are right, so like a computer center, yes. things like that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. we've had yeah. we've had places where fire alarm panels have been blown out strangely, and not just one, right? So <laughs> with a surge or something, right? Like that. And yeah. so it, we can't go back and with the finger outside, but. How do we protect against this later? And so we've installed equipment in different places to try to prevent those things from happening again. Yeah. And some of it's old equipment. It's like, remember our computers 30 years ago? Man, I, you know, a little outage or something, it'd, be, it'd go out. But all the new electronics, uh, I don't know when's the last time your TV went out or something because of power, but some of their motors still may be older. Um, but the um, Black Hills is like Excel. They really fight hard against harmonics because harmonics will screw up your system. So, right. um, and most, uh, you know, I can't think, unless you're putting a, you got a welder at home, you know, um, those are terrible on harmonics, but, uh, but anyway, I'll, we'll look into it. You said you get 13%? Is that translating to your bill? Yeah, okay. I mean, I mean, um, you know, uh, I mean, I I'm, 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 I'm from a, that perspective. We've just been always- I'm, an, I'm a net metering customer, right? Yeah. So I, I produce all my own energy. And I, 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 you know, I, I did some energy. I did some electrification projects. Okay, yeah. so one of the first things I did is I insulated my attic. So I added I'm an R60 in my attic. I think the code is R40. Um, and you know, I mean, the more the, the more insulation you get, the, the payback is it's kind of like a one over R squared type right. thing, right? Um, but uh, it it actually helped. My home. I I hardly use air conditioning in the in the uh, in the summer. Good. Okay. Uh, because what I do is I cool my house off at night, nice. and that coolness it cools everything in the house, and it lasts most of the day. You know, it gets uh, in these hundred degree days. You know, I can last till about five p.m. And then I might have to turn up the AC. Yeah. Um, if you if you're coming from a a car, you know, that has seventy degrees set, and you come into the house, it seems hot. Sure. But if you've been in that house, you know, at 78, where I have my thermostat set, it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and the other thing I did was I went to a heat pump water heater yep. from natural gas. And I'm saving money. Good. So, yeah. Um, but we'll check into that. So, so you know, this, this idea of a heat pump, you know, when, when you can, can do it, there may be opportunities, even though, it's, you know, you're using elect electricity to power it. Um, a heat pump is like 3x uh, more efficient than just, you know, dr a direct, uh, if you're doing resistive heating for a, a water heater. This is another one where the uh, 
the uh, heat, the, the 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 heat pump water heaters, right? The hybrid water heaters are pulling heat into the water. And so your space down there gets cooler and now you need more therms of gas. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, in the in the summer you are or in the so you're getting an extra energy in the machine. Well, yeah, well, yeah you are. I mean, you're going to vent that outside, though, you said. Right? You could vent it. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. next? So we can see, you know, the lights, probably the biggest investment, but the most savings. Um, we'll just keep going through. Uh, let's look at another building now. So uh, this next one uh, is the city hall. We'll just go through it real quick. Um, just going to go to the sheet again. Um, so we see a lot of, there's some theater incandescent lighting, uh, possibly replaced as well as, um, another, uh, chilled water reset. Um, of course, weatherization of the exterior doors. There's some gaps there that could, we could look to replace that. Um, there is a, uh, you know, recommendation for a vending machine, um, uh, control, uh, something smaller. Um, the city owned the vending machine? <laughs> so we see... Good question. I'm not sure on the Memorial Hall side. We see what we're at right now and then the proposed um, implementations. Um, definitely some savings with those. Electricity as well as the gas again. Uh, just going to keep going through these. So we see here again the table for implementations, um, one course, one year yeah. payback. Hot water reset range. You, you're crazy not to um, that. <laughs> so these are just small implementations. Again, installing vending machine misers. Right, I guess that's a. Uh, we're getting the, we get the if, it, if there's a vending company, get them to replace it with a more yeah. modern one that shuts off. Um, right? Well. So this is talking about the weatherization right here. We can see the gaps. So probably looking to replace those so we have better yeah. control of the building envelope. Um, then let's just go ahead and move forward with uh oh, we still we see have the incandescent lights right here looking to be replaced. I don't know how uh everyone, you know, the cultural, the historic aspect of the City Hall. Yeah, Hopefully they could be retrofitted. The, the new the new lighting. The yeah, I think on the wall are different colors. Like or even though they're white, mm -hmm. you know, you got soft white, you got yellow light, you have things, but yeah, that's I, I used to hear that a lot. Oh, it, it makes the theater look better. If you were to change them all out, they would never even know that it's changed out. Hopefully they're they're just screwing bulbs, you know. It might have been true 10 years ago, but I don't think it's true today. No. So the thing that surprised me, I don't know if this so we've got uh, the city hall building, which is a very old building, right? And it has very little room for improvement. And then we have a relatively new building that needs a ton of yes. yes. That that just blows my that mind. That building is the newest. Well, not the newest. I think I think fire station four might be slightly newer. Anyway, they're about the same vintage. But those are the ones. And when we start talking about <laughs> designing these buildings with energy efficiencies in mind, commissioning at Construction is an important part of mm -hmm. this whole thing. And I, I can't tell you that that was done anywhere so far. It'll be part of our specs for the fire station, for the three fire stations. And it'll be part of any specification we have going forward to make sure that we are getting what we pay for. Um, I think they cut some corners here at this I, building, right? I've heard the story that we bought the uh, HVAC unit at a trade show in Las Vegas. And that it was the last unit. Not, you know, I, who knows? I can't tell you if that was the truth, but if they bought a unit from a company that was going to put it on the roof in Arizona and decided not to put it in, mm -hmm. and we bought it and brought it up here, and it's not the right it's thing, yeah. what are we doing? Right. I'm sure we got a great deal up front. It, it's, it's all about building science, right? Is yes. it, what you need to, to do, right? Follow the science. And look at the long arc of operations and maintenance as the that's the bulk of your cost for your it's, it's cost of ownership is the way I look at it. I mean, you, you're making these investments up front to save money, you know, uh, down 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 in the years. And, and that money is going to have gigantic payback. Very much. So for fire station number four here, we see a much smaller list. Um, we see, you know, upgrading lighting to LED, the biggest cost, but also 
uh, the biggest potential savings, um, adjusting the restroom, air balancing to make it more comfortable for heating and cooling, um, installing evaporative cooler duct extension. So again, looking at energy now, and then of course proposed um, even looks like it might generate more energy. Oh, same on, same on thirds. This was an interesting building. I asked them to look at this one because there's a geothermal um, oh, the heat um, yield mm -hmm. that, that they yes uh, yeah. that's used to heat this building, mm -hmm. heating cool. Uh -huh. So um, I wanted them to look at that because it was uh, so there are other three fire stations coming at will as well, and uh, I was curious what they found in terms of potential opportunities with cool. the system there. We've had some like mechanical things go down on there, but it's been just pump replacements and seal replacements, that sort of thing. So things you would expect. I, yes, nothing, nothing crazy. But um, I wanted to see if they identified anything right off the bat in terms of controls or commissioning or settings that, that could be uh, adjusted that might be a quick hit to make a win on those systems as well, knowing that we're walking into buying three more. Well, it just looks like it's. Um, telling us the different recommendations here. Um, the air is not balanced correct. Um, so installing that would help. Um, as well as, like I said, updating the lights. Um, what else? I was talking about that. Did you look at inside air quality? Did they talk about that at all in terms of that's a, it's really a big deal. Sure. Most of these buildings, what they call them sick buildings, because um, even your own home, you should sure. have a fan come on, you know, periodically through the day to exchange that, that heat. But um, when you do that, of course, then you use energy because sure. you're bringing cold air in and, and um, um, you know, unless you preheat it. But I just was wondering if they talked about that. They mentioned it, I mean, in, in general, right? We talked about it as something. They didn't talk about it as a specific fix for any of these. They did talk about it in terms of PMJC for the day that they were out looking, right? There was the outdoor air was 81 degrees. Why were these settings set the way they were? You shouldn't need that because when you bring in some outside, outdoor yeah. air, you wouldn't have to heat or cool it very much. Um, so they were looking at it from a you know timing of when you do that. Kind of perspective. Well, uh, when uh, you do outdoor exchange, I think I think Angie brings up something important, right? When you have these really tight buildings, right, mm -hmm. that you do need to ventilate them, sure. right? Well, so, sure. so uh, that should be part of the high vac system, you know, that air exchange system where you do cycle and you know the air every now yeah. and then, and it's right? mandatory on new, new yeah. buildings, or you or you or you run a little you know vent fan. Like you're saying, you know, you, you do it at 25 percent on, the time, on, the time on, on these systems too. They're talking about the the varying varying the percentage of outdoor air that's brought in at different times of day based on the temperature. So if it's okay. close, if you're closer to the temperature you want outside, inside, right? If you're at room and air temperatures inside or close, that's the time to bring in your outdoor air and get those exchanges done. And then they can also close them when the temperatures get hot or cold, so you're not burning off a ton of energy. Well, I mean, the other the other thing is is I think we learned some of this because of COVID, right? And and how right it's know. it's it's a, a real major deal because um, you know the more air exchange seem to be the the winners and not um, passing on the disease were the buildings that had better flow. They they showed it with by using smoke to indicate how COVID would spread. Sure. And if if you don't have air moving, uh, it would just all sit here and we'd all be breathing that same air. If you had it moving, it would just constantly be taking it, you know, to where it's going. But but the big thing is, um, you know, it's mandatory on new buildings, old buildings, it hasn't been, but it may be in the future, especially uh, government buildings, because sure. You know, you, that, I mean, the main purpose of government is to protect your people. So, I mean, bringing an outdoor air was part of the design of these. It's just how you set them and how you control that. Is there, was a, there was a 60 minutes on this. I, yeah. think, it, I think it was like this last 60 sure. minutes they, they talked about. And I also heard it on it's going to start becoming more mandatory because of, uh, you know, there's there literally are sick buildings, whether they have COVID or not. You know, if you're rebreathing your own air, that, you know, the um, not, you know the carbon di carbon dioxide. Um, um, you know it it removes the oxygen. Yeah, I know that. Um, you know I um, I've, I 
you know, these smart thermostats can do do these things too. They can, you know, cycle your air. You can, you know, you can you can do it um, a percentage, you know, ten percent, twenty five percent, you know. So it'd come on and run for every fifteen minutes or something like that. Yeah, right. It's a simple. Well, you know, everything. Of course, simple, the, but... of course, the filtering needs to be there too, right? So you yeah. know, you might want a MERV sixteen yeah. filter or something like. And that. And sometimes you know they preheat. They got to preheat it because it's zero degrees outside. You know you. But um, it's not a lot of air. It's just a, it's got to be in all the different rooms because you got the doors shut. So it's got to be coming somewhere. But that's sorry, I didn't spend my, too much time talking about it. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so these things on the on the fire station, they were kind of minimalistic. And is, is that kind of what you were mm -hmm. about? Sure. List on that one. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there are still opportunities there. So. There's opportunities. Sure. Yeah. And low payback. Yeah, the fire station looks. The best right now, the smallest recommendations. Um, some yeah. stuff that was considered, but not a uh, big deal. Garage door interlock, compressor scheduling. How old is this fire station? Um, probably about the same era as the fire as a police station. It's uh, two thousand five ish. About ten, two thousand two. Oh, no, I'm trying to remember. That was on one of my projects. Mm -hmm. 10 or 11, 2010 or 11, I think it was. I left in 14. I think that's about when. So this it'll be about 10, 10 years. This is the one right by Lake Manitoba. Correct. Right by the uh, hospital. It's a oh, down the lake. Yeah. Uh, not to interrupt, but we probably should just out of respect yeah, for people's okay. time. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, um, are there any questions? Well, we lost our quorum. So I think we can vote on the bylaws now. But I just wanted to see what other okay. action items for the next I'll week. Again, so I think I, I, I laws on the next month. I think what we need to do is make sure that we ask everybody to read these. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we come in, we come in next meeting first with the you know with the um with the agenda and then we vote and we vote on it. So well and I, I I think we need to have a discussion about some of the items to to decide what we want to do. So you think we need to to have like a and, and the next meeting, have, have that discussion and then come back maybe the following meeting to vote on it? Well, maybe if you, uh, George will agree on it. If you send this out an email and start a discussion group uh, email, because okay. then we can send those back in and you can send them to, you know, just our uh, committee. And then we can get the discussion, get it settled, um, you know, over the next month. Would that be? Would yeah, that but be you have a specific agreeable? concern, Alan? Well, yeah, I, ju I just thought some of the things we, we need to see if we're all on the same page, because I'm just throwing out my own personal opinion on them, and I'd like some feedback, like okay. on, on meetings, you know, what, what sort of attendance policy do we want to have? Mm -hmm. I think George proposed something. One of the questions I had is, do we want to make a preference for in-person? Um, I didn't want to go with that one myself, because I think it's probably, for me, it's generational. I like to attend meetings in person, but I understand. Mm -hmm stand other generations may feel differently about that and then the other thing is we're about saving energy and online meetings save transportation energy so i don't want to i don't want to we can up. turn the lights off yeah, yeah. well I'm, not, I'm talking about the transportation <laughs> I that people were I, 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 running to the old meeting spot and coming right back here yeah, yeah. and some yeah. of these bylaws uh, it, it'll it almost has to be a work in progress because we set them down and then you know in the three meetings, somebody says, geez, I, you know, I got this sickness. Sure. So I'm going to be out for a certain length of time and you can't say when you're gone, you know. So we have to let it uh, let it um, uh, get the best we can. And then, you know, we'll, as part of the um, when we vote on it, that agree that we'll look at it every, you know, maybe quarterly just to see that we're, I mean, we're not all breaking all the rules or or all the rules are so hard on people. We can't we're not getting attendance anymore. Yeah. So, well, yeah. the other thing that I thought needed some additional work was the expenditure sports mm -hmm. portion. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, I looked at that and I was like, I didn't even realize we had a budget and could spend money. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I'm so glad I quit. Like, what, what are we allocated and what is the process? Do we have to get, if we're going to spend money, do we have to get prior authorization? Mm -hmm. Or is it a case of we just spend it and then tell the mayor, here's what we did? No. Because the... Uh, was there a budget allocated? No. Okay. I'm, I mean, uh, if there is one, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I talked I, to the, I talked to the mayor at one time saying, you know, I wanted to do a team building thing. 
right? Uh, to, uh, to get us away, you know, I was thinking like, a, a, like you know, maybe we could go away for a weekend and and sit down and talk about all these things. So we we don't have a lot of of talk time, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, and and we could and we could hash out some of the bigger issues. So, you know, something like this, you could you could you could get resolved, right? If we could all sit around a table, um, and and he wasn't he, he didn't say no. But he wanted to understand the cost of something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if we all went and had to pay hotels and you know it cost thousand dollars, probably the answer would be no. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or if we told him a, a seminar, does the best seminar in the world is in a, another state, and it'd be great to have everyone from the energy advisor or toward to go. But that's mm -hmm. something. It sounds like if we do, um, I think we have some money for for whether it's a special printing or to you know pay Andrew a little bit more so he gets here a little <laughs> earlier or something. You know. Um, we could we can propose that and then see what's available, and I think he'll weigh it on on the benefits, and then also what's left on on there in his budget too. But uh, like you know, I mean the the, the, t the city financing is are, is tight, right? I mean they're they're doing this budgeting right now, and they're having you know they don't have enough. <laughs> um, I mean, keep in mind if you're talking about you know what a commission budget of a thousand dollars a year to for incidental costs or some yeah some I, whatever I, something I, small. I I mean. It's probably a yes on something like that. Well, we, we the council sets it, right? I mean, it's still something that would have to be budgeted appropriate, just like anything else. Sure. But, I mean, if you ask for it, I mean, that's if you had a budget you were thinking of and something you wanted to do, I would feed that information to George so we can try to uh, bring that to the mayor's attention and ask him how we can. I mean, I mean, let's one of the one of the, one of our asks was to get somebody to help from the city, and we got George here now, right? <laughs> so. Uh, you know, that's not a that, so that's different. not a minor expense. Oh, no. No. Um, George is very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh, we're done. Um, uh, there was uh, there was one other thing I wanted to uh, talk about, uh, and uh, now now I've kind of lost track of my my thoughts. Um, it'll come back. Oh, we're, we're we're close to being done. You know, I, I, it, it's hard to see. You know, when you when you're looking at this stuff, it's hard to see progress. But when you talk about fire stations, when you talk about uh, getting somebody to to work to help us with these um, mm -hmm. with the energy issues, because the payback is is much greater, right? I mean, George can pay for himself by getting a couple a couple grants in, mm -hmm. right? So, um, uh, I, I just I want to have a little bit more time to to deal with that kind of general discussion. You know, we're always, we're way yeah. past our, our uh, time. And it is something maybe in the bylaws. I think it's it's always good to start on time and end on time. If you if you want to make a change in the time that we have on it, but I think it's pretty or important. Maybe, or maybe we increase the frequency of these meetings. Well, maybe we, you know, maybe it would be more efficient if, if we use a more efficient time during our discussion. Uh, you know, always helps to a tighter agenda or, right. or, or a, um, you well, know, this, 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 meeting, this meeting was an example. I mean, cause, cause we're, you know, um, we're talking about these energy contracts and, and I thought it was important for you to be here yes. and, and you got called away, you know, I'm probably more important than that, but, uh, depends on who's, who's perspective, but yes, <laughs> it was, it was important <laughs> from your boss's perspective, um, which, is, which is the important thing. Um, um, the the other question I had, I know what it was. Uh, do we want to have the meetings here, or do we want to do we want to continue them at, at City Hall? It's fine if the, George is this good. For I you? think it's great. I mean, we got Andrew here too. And... Yeah, and I think it's better than the mayor's office because sometimes we get bumped. You know, and then it's... just don't think it's at Waterworks because yeah. I ran all the way to Waterworks because I was late, and that's for Ellen. And and, and then uh, I had the wrong works. It's public works, not water works. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and I'm two, two blocks away. Availability will make this available. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a big deal at all. And it's from an access standpoint, like you were kind of pointing out at five five o'clock, folks are getting the boot over there from security kind of. And so they're, oh yeah, that's why they're hustling okay. to roll at 515. Mm -hmm. But so they don't have that computer. here. We don't have the security yeah. issue. And then if you, if you can, so you, have okay. a, you have another building that has this, this type of facility. So I have three in this building. This one, that's the big one. We have a small one back here. We're just setting up. And we have another one in the back and planning. So, so can so you, uh, would it be all right for him to set that up? Or we plan on the same first Wednesday? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we're, I don't, I don't think we're changing the date. 
when we do have a venue change, we need to make sure that everybody understands, you know, put that address out. Uh, oh, yeah. No, he did everything was right. It was, you know, I yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, we were, I was already the thank it. Uh, Alan, oh, thanks for, you know, having it at your facility. <laughs> and I read the other, no, I'm kind of, you know, and I hate being late, but uh, we appreciate you hosting it here. It's really cool. Yeah, I, I think this is a good venue because, I mean, the room's big enough. It seems like it works well with the with the technology. Part of it makes it easier enough. for, well, you were, for you today, it makes it easier for you. Too. We got a brand new carpet. 1970s. Yes, I know. 